Deuteronomy chapter 32 this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 32 for the message today. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Great time to be alive. Right down the end of the church age, there's still souls to be had. Just go out and get them. Go out and get them. Pass out them tracts, get those books out. I read somebody for Jesus Christ along the way. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. This morning, I had never another message to preach, but the Lord led me this way this morning. Um, they have a, I'll, I'll have one, but they, they tell me on the television, they have what's called reruns. Ever heard of them? Where they replay, I Love Lucy, and um, Father's Knows Best, or um, Bonanza, Leave It the Beaver, all right, Gilligan's Island, all right, uh, what else y'all just watch? You watch the Untouchables? All right, what else y'all watch? Uh, what do you watch? Oh, come on, all these people watch TV in this church. I'm going to change the message again. I, I'm going to preach on TV today. All right, all these other people watch. All right? But they have reruns. Like they have stations that are just dedicated to nothing more than reruns. Amen. So there ought not to be anything wrong with uh, rerunning a sermon every once in a while. Now I've got a rerun this morning. Unless you were not here 20 years ago. Uh, if you've not, Mark, if you're not here 20 years ago, this will be a new for you. But if you were here 20 years ago, it, it's a rerun. It's like watching something old on the television. Deuteronomy chapter 32 this morning. Deut Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh, let's have a word of prayer this morning. Father, we do thank you, Lord, today. Oh, for your great grace. Thank you, Lord, today. You've allowed us to live in this day and this time. Lord, to be a light for the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, you help us, Lord, to reach our country then with the gospel. Lord, besides, uh, Lord, the missions that we support, and we thank the Lord for all the many missionaries that we put out, and uh, Lord, this past year to support, and we thank the Lord you've allowed us to continue, Lord, that without cutting a single dollar from our mission son. Thank you, Lord, today for our salvation through Jesus Christ. We thank you for the good testimony today from our brother. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to have the nursing home today, Lord, and the gospel going out to these elderly folks, Lord, and pray, Lord, somebody be saved there even today. Thank you now, Lord, just for your goodness now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm going to preach a little bit today about seven birds. Seven birds that are all pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll give you all seven ahead of time. We've got an eagle. We've got a hen. We've got a pigeon. We've got a dove. We've got a pelican. We've got an owl. And we've got a sparrow. Seven birds, eyes, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Number one is the eagle. Of course, the eagle, as we all know, is, is, a, is a marvelous bird. It's probably the most majestic right, of all the birds that there are in the world. It's the most glorious. It is the most striking right, in its appearance, right, the eagle. If you've never had a chance to go down even the Cincinnati Zoo and look at the size of that eagle, now, that's a big bird. I mean, he's just not a little bitty bird like this. There's a hawk down here in Miami town that sits on the, on the, on the soccer field to see him all the time out there. He's, he's about, yeah, he's a pretty really good sized hawk down there, but that's nothing compared to an eagle. That eagle's a big bird when you go down and look at that eagle. Pretty good sized bird. In the early church, I, right, uh, when they pictured the four evangelists, I, right, that wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they pictured the gospel of John as the eagle. Amen. For they believed the eagle spoke, of course, of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, we, we, we call the lion, right, the king of the beasts. Well, the eagle stands as the king of the birds, the king of the birds. It has strength to store above the highest mountain peaks, and there is no bird any stronger than the eagle. In Job chapter 39, verse 27 and 28, the Bible tells us the eagle dwells in the high rocks, in the high rocks. The eagle has, has mastery, as big as the bird as it is, it has mastery over the strongest winds. You get up there to high mountain peaks out right, of the earth uh, and the valley down in between those mountains, right, uh, 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 that eagle, right, uh, that's where he does his hunting, down the valley. 
and some of the strongest winds known to man are, are up there uh, among the mountain peaks. You don't fly airplanes around the mountain peaks. It's not because of the mountain peaks themselves. It's because of the winds being so strong that they will take that plane and just dash it into the rocks, amen, or throw it down into the canyons there around those mountain peaks. Yet that eagle, that great eagle, right, uh, in his great strength, uh, is able to master the winds uh, and use those winds as he soars right, through the air. Also, the eagle is known for its speed. It is truly a gracious and a wonderful bird, the eagle. And on top of that, think of the unparalleled vision boy, of the eagle. That eagle can see a little field mouse miles and miles and miles away and then swoop down and pick that little rascal up, take him home for supper. Amazing bird, the eagle is. Of course, all of those things picture, of course, the deity and power of our, and the might, of course, of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says here in verse 11, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. I'm thankful this morning, I, uh, I'm one of his young. I'm thankful I am one of his children, I, today. Well, what that eagle does, right, uh, is not only gives birth, right, to those young eaglets, not only feeds those young eaglets and nourishes, I, right, those young birds uh, until they're strong enough to get out and fly on their own and soar through the mountains, peaks themselves, right, on those strong winds. But that eagle has fed and nourished those youngs. And then one day, that eagle decides it's time for that child. It's time for that eaglet to try its own wings to see if it can fly, I, even as I fly, Mother Eagle says. And what that eagle, eagle does, I, with its wings, it just stirs up that nest. And it causes those young ones, I, to be driven out of the nest. If you, if, I mean, if you step out of the eagle's nest, they usually don't build them on the ground. They usually don't build them on you know, low trees. They build them way up high. And if you were to step out of the eagle's nest, right, it's a long way down to the next step. I mean, a long way down to the next step. And that little bird, right, when it's pushed out of the nest by Mommy Eagle, and it begins to plummet, right, down from its mountain peak, right, toward the bottom, perhaps, of that canyon. I don't know if, if, if any birds have any brains or not. I've heard of bird brains, right, and all that stuff. But that, legal, if that little eaglet's eye is able to think and the reason at all. It's the one thing that is on its mind is, Help! As then it goes over the edge of that cliff, right, out of that nest, uh, it's crying out for help. what it's doing. Because you know what? It doesn't stand a chance. Its wings are not strong enough yet. It's not developed enough yet to fly back to the nest on its own. And that mother bird, it'll watch. Now, there goes Junior. And he's going, he's going down fast. That little bird, that mother bird will watch that little bird for a while, and then she'll take flight. And she'll swoop down, amen. And she won't grab that little bird in her beak. She will not grab that little bird in her claws. She'll fly under that little bird, right? And that little bird will land on that mother's back and fly back through those winds back into the nest. Not by his own strength, but it comes back in on the wings of Mom Eagle. I thank God this morning that the Lord not only gives us birth, He not only feeds us and sustains us, but one of the days when the Lord says, it's time for you, right? Uh, it's time for you, uh, that for you to wait upon the Lord. It's time for you to renew your strength, to run and not to be weary, to walk and not to faint. I to mount up with wings of eagles. And one day you're going along in your Christian life. And all of a sudden you look, and no longer are you in the safe security aids of the nest. Suddenly you are plummeting down I, the mountainside, I racing down I, at incredible speed toward the valley below. And you sense that you know what? Man, you're ruined. You sense, man, that you're doomed. 
your sense, man, that it's all over, boy. This, this is bad. This is horrible. I, I, I'm, I'm, fixing to, I'm fixing to smack in the very bottom of the canyon. And then here comes the Lord Jesus Christ. He does not take and grab you with his beak. He does not snatch you with his claws. He just comes and he gives you a place to land and then bears you up on his wings. And by his strength, he carries you back into the nest and he sets you there and he says, you can't do it on your own, can you? But I'm here. I'm present. I'll bear you up. I'll bear you up. Lest any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. I thank God for my great mother evil. A picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times, I can't tell you, how many times has he come and picked me up and carry me back to that place of safety? What a picture of our Savior. He truly is as the evil. Amen. Number two, look at Matthew chapter 23. I get through 70, so I can't spend a lot of time on any one of them. Matthew chapter 23. I'm glad I've got a Savior that'll pick me up. And he'll carry me. Amen. All wings of eagles. Ah, here's another bird. Matthew chapter 23. Has he picked you up a time or two? Hasn't he saved you from man crashing in the rocks below? Boy, he has me many a times. Thank God for my mother eagle, the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 23, secondly here, verse 37. Christ says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Second bird I find about the Lord Jesus Christ is a hen, is a hen. Now, there's, a, there's not a whole lot about a chicken that is like Jesus Christ. I mean, thank God. I mean, I mean thank God I ate for chickens. Uh, but he's no chicken. Amen. This world's going to find out the second advent. There's nothing chicken about him. He's going to come down in flames. I mean, in flames of fire. I, he's going to take over. And I'll tell you what, he ain't going to back down for nobody. I, he's no chicken. I ate uh, but out there on that farm, there's his mother hen. And all these little chicks, I right, uh, run around there in, in the barnyard there, I right, uh, around mother hen. And those little chicks are all running around having themselves a good time. They're pecking here and pecking there and pecking here, eating this bug, that bug, that other bug, I right, eat a piece of corn, wherever they, wherever they, they just run around having a good time, I right, and, and they're just little chicks. They're oblivious to the chicken hawks. They're oblivious to the serpents. They're oblivious, I right, to the dogs, I right, and the coons, and whatever else will sneak in there, the weasels, I right, and skunks, whatever's making it to hold those little chicks. They don't even know those creatures exist. They're just running around the, around, around the, around, around the chicken coop there, the chicken yard there, their backyard there. I mean, just being little chicks, I right, eat whatever they can get hold of. But that mother hen, she's just not eating there in the barnyard. She is all the time looking to make sure those young ones are safe. The mother hen, the mother hen. And when she spies that hawk, I to, and a signal goes out from mother hen, I dare, all those little chicks will do what? They'll come running, and they'll get as close as they can to that hen, and she puts them under her wings. And they still don't know that it's a hawk. They still don't know that the serpent's nearby. They don't even know that that dog or that fox eyed is out there. All they heard is mama cry out, danger, danger. And they knew the place of safety was right there on the mother's wings. They go straight to mama hen, right? They get close to mama as they possibly can, right, as that place of safety. And there's no trouble under, under, under the wings, mama's wings. And they look up. They don't see a hawk. They look up. All they see is mama's wings. And they're not worried about anything. Those little chicks, all right? All they know is, we're safe. You know, if they stay out there, when mama calls, says, danger, danger, all right, hurry, hurry back, hurry back here, children, danger, danger. And they stay out there, and they, and, they, and they disregard mama's call, which, of course, they don't. 
only man rebels. But if they didn't come and mama called danger, what happened was they'd have desolation. They'd be devoured. They'd be taken. Jesus Christ here says, I, the mother hen, I saw the danger from the Gentile dogs, O Jerusalem. I saw the danger from the serpent, the devil, O Jerusalem. I saw the danger from the prince of the power of the air, O Jerusalem. And I called to you, and if you would just come unto me, all ye that labor are heavy on that laden, and you just come to me, I would have sheltered you. I would have protected you under my wings. But your house is left to you desolate, not because of the power of the dog, not because of the power of the servants, not because of the power of, 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 of the hawk, not because of the power of the prince of the power of the air. Your house is left unto you desolate because I called and you wouldn't come. Look with me in Psalm 61 once. Better heed when he calls. It's a place of safety under those wings. Psalm 61. A couple of verses here. Psalm 61, look at verse 4. Place of safety. Psalm 61, verse 4. Here, here the psalmist David says, I would abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. What a place to trust in the wings. Look in Psalm 67, verse 3. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. About that, wings again, like in God having wings. Psalm 91 once. Psalm 91 once. Oh, that letter has a, come, come, come get underneath my wings. It's a place of safety. Psalm 91 one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. There's a safe place. There is a secret place. There is a place of refuge where I am sheltered from all the enemy, and it's under the wings of my God. If you ever hear the Lord call danger, if you ever hear the Scriptures cry, cry, cry out warning, don't play around. Don't fool around, I to run as quick as you can and find a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. You take refuge under his wings. Amen? So, an eagle's compared to Jesus Christ. Boy, a chicken a hen's compared to Jesus Christ. How about another one? Psalm 102 once. Some birds, They're like the Lord Jesus Christ. You learn a lot from animals. Psalm 102. Let's begin in verse number one. Third one, there's only seven of them. Here's number three. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that, I for, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my roaring, my bones cleave to my skin. Now notice verse 6. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am an owl of the deserts. Let's take in verse number six here. I, that bird, first bird message there is a pelican. A pelican. You know a pelican? That's a strange bird. Uh, you ever seen a pelican? A great big mouth that got on them, a great big jaw like that pelican got. I mean, uh, I mean, you throw, the, throw that pelican a fish, you know what he does? He gets it down that big beak. I, the pelican got a big beak. And you throw him another fish, you know what else? He catches that in his big beak too. 
And you throw him another fish, he catches that and his big, big two, that pelican does. Right? And, 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 and soon you watch, you throw enough fish, that beak of his eye right, is going to get fuller and fuller and fuller until it drags the ground. The pelican, right? You know, and God gave the pelican that beak for special reason. Of course, that's because that's he's the creator. He knows what everybody needs. He knows what the fox needs. He knows what the dogs need. He knows what the cats need. He knows what the pelicans need. He knows what the eagles need. He knows what all the creatures need because he made them. All right? And God gave that pelican eye that beak for a special reason. He can load that thing up with food and fly far out into the wilderness, further than any other bird can go, way out there in the desert, I desolate places where there is no food, there is nothing to take and live on. The pelican has, has no means of self-defense, the pelican bird. I mean, they got those little dumpy legs, say pelican, they got little dumpy legs, amen. They got those web, the feet, I, they got that big back, big, big beak, I, it kind of makes them almost look like they're front heavy, I, got that big back, they got a funny little neck on them, amen, and they really have basically no self-defense. You, you, they're not going to bite you, right, the old pelican. So God gave him wings, gave him a big beak, so he can go far out there in the wilderness, further than any bird I could get to, right there, and nobody can molest him, and he'd be safe in the wilderness. They say that out there, miles and miles and miles and miles, out in the desert of Arabia, far away from any water, far away from any civilization, far away from any plant life, way out in the desert, they'll find a flock of pelicans out there right, sitting around in the desert eating pineapple and fish. That's a picture of my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Savior's out there in the wilderness place doing battle with the devil. He's been there for 40 days and 40 nights. Has nothing to eat. And the old devil comes up and says, If thou be the Son of God, command of these stones, I be made bread. What the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ told him? He says, I don't live on bread alone. I live on every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. His disciples one time, I came and said, Master, why don't you stop out and, 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 and take some time to eat? And he said, I have meat that you know not of is what he said. You're going to have some times in life and some place in your Christian life where well, it's going to be pretty pretty desolate. It's going to be pretty barren. It's going to be pretty dry sometimes in your Christian life. You'll read your Bible, amen, and you know what? It doesn't seem like you're getting anything out of it for the day. Just kind of dry, desolate, I maybe your mind someplace else, and you're just getting much out of it for the day. But thank God that pelican in the wilderness, the Lord Jesus Christ, here he comes. And you say, Lord, man, I'm starving out here in this wilderness. Man, it's famine out here in this dry, dry, dry land. And my soul is so hungry, I, for something uh, of spiritual meat, I, uh, that I need so desperately. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, I brought some sustenance with me. I know, I know you're a stranger in a strange land. I know you're a pilgrimite, uh, on, on just a soldier right in this whole world. And you don't belong in this world. You belong up there in glory with me. And I know there's nothing down here to take and satisfy you. But I brought you something. I, I brought something for you so you can live and find sustenance right, uh, in this wilderness. That pelican goes further than any other bird into the wilderness. And my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, went further than any man has ever gone into the wilderness of sorrow and of affliction and of suffering, and he came out triumphant, sustained by the Father. If he can go through that, if he can go that far and come out triumphantly, you know what? I can take and go through whatever he calls me to go through and come out the winner and be victorious. The Hebrew word for pelican means vomiting. Vomiting. All right? That, uh, what that pelican does, it gets all that food, then flies out there right, to its young in their nest. And, and you know what it does? It raises his wings up, and it holds that big back, 
and it begins to heap, regurgitate. All right? To bring that food up out of its belly there for that young ones. And when it does that, that white pelican, as the, as, as, as the food begins right, to come up, that pelican's blood right, is forcing that food up out of its belly, right, and that pelican begins to turn red. And all the way up by its beak until what? The food goes out and vomits out the feet it's young. And the ancients believed that the pelican feeds and sustains its young with its own blood. So you go into the ancient catacombs and you'll find that the, that the early Christians oftentimes pictured the Lord Jesus Christ not just as a little fish, but as a pelican. Because they believed his children live and are sustained by his own blood. How about that? I live by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm sustained in this wilderness. Amen. I'm sustained in this wilderness place by the Lord Jesus Christ, my great poet. Amen. Just some birds. God just throws these birds in the Bible. All right? For what reason? He says they're pictures. They're pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the great pelican to sustain our souls in this wilderness. Well, number six, uh, number four here, in Psalm 102, verse number six again, he says, I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. The owl of the desert. You know, the owl to me speaks to us of um, separation and seclusion. The owl. You usually don't see owls out during the day. All right. You don't see them sitting on flag on, on, on telephone poles, and you don't see them sitting in trees all right, during the daytime. I remember a few years ago coming up uh, Mount Hope on uh, a yeah, uh, strip of road over here. All right, there's a great big old white owl was sunning himself in the road early morning. The sun was up, and I didn't see him. I come up over the hill, and there's this big owl like right, right there in the road. And I mean, he come up and he saw me. He tries to take off and he hits the front of my car. All right, as I'm coming down here, and he does a little flip flop on right, on the side of the road, and then he soars up in the tree. All right, big owl, big owl. You know, the owl speaks to me of separation and seclusion. You don't see much of them, right? Because it's basically a nocturnal animal, is it not? It doesn't, it does much of it, it doesn't do much dealings right, during the day. In fact, it doesn't does have much dealings with other, with other birds. It's kind of a uh, secluded, separated bird, the owl is. It's pretty much a, uh, a secret bird. You don't know much about them. How much do we really know? about the Lord Jesus Christ the first 30 years that he lived down here on this earth. You know, you, you, know you, you have one story. You know, you have one day, right, in 30 years. We read about him going into the temple there, right, and teaching those people in the temple as Joseph and Mary, I came looking for him. One day in 30 years is all we got. Yeah, I mean, you, you take all the sermons, everything in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, and they, are, and they are great and wonderful books about the Lord Jesus Christ. But you really don't know much about them. How much do you know about all those night prayer sessions that he had with the Father? What they talk about? What they talk about? All night prayer sessions. See, that owl is kind of a mysterious murder. Kind of a secluded bird, dwelling alone. There are four psalms that deal with sorrow. Psalm 88, Psalm 69, Psalm 102, and then Psalm 22. And each of those psalms deal with loneliness and heartache so great that no one else could come home, could, could, could come help and to bear that burden. That grief, that trouble, that separation, I, from, from friends and loved ones. Oh, so great. But no one seemed to help. You're going to have times in your life, Christian, when you're going to, when you're going to stand over a coffin. Some of you had this last year. Stand over a coffin. Or you'll sit there by a sick bed. Or you're going to have a, a tragedy or a problem. I, you know what? It's going to come upon you suddenly. And it'll do you good, I right? pick up the trunk if I call somebody, but sometimes you can't get a hold of nobody. Because the truth of the matter is, nobody knows what you are going through. One more. 
That's our God. I know when Al in the desert, he's lived by himself for most, for, well, for, for the most part, for a whole month of his whole life. Does anybody understand God stepping down? How, how can anybody understand God stepping down so low as to become a man? Does anybody really understand that? How can you explain God stepping down and becoming a man? The creator of heavens and the earth. Letting man spit in his face. Can you understand I, the Son of God, crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I don't know how far out in the desert you may be, but there's somebody I that knows exactly what you're going through. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Look in Psalm 22 real fast. There's somebody who knows exactly how it feels to be forsaken by friends. Somebody knows exactly how it feels to be forsaken by loved ones. Somebody who knows exactly what it is to be forsaken by, forsaken by family and neighbors. He's been there. He's been forsaken, has he not? In Psalm 22, and verse number 1, here the words are, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. He says in verse 11, Be not far from me. For trouble is near, and there is none to help. Sometimes you'll go through things, and there's no earthly man, no earthly woman that can help you through that time. Verse number 19. Be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Hast thee, I too, help, or haste thee to help me. Jesus Christ, listen, has called you to take up a cross and to follow him. But your cross will never involve bearing the sins of the whole world. Your cross will never involve the iniquity and transgression of every son of Adam being laid upon you. And your cross is one about which Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He went to the cross. He was forsaken by the Father. So you know what? So you can take up your cross, right, that he has for you and the burden he has for you. And no matter how bad it gets, he can speak to your heart and he can say, at least you're not alone. I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my owl in the desert times of life. He's my owl in the night seasons of life. He's my companion in the most desolate places I've ever walked in my life. Thank God for that owl there in the deserts. Look at the Leviticus chapter 5 once. Here's another one. Leviticus. There's some, there's some birds that got through in the Bible. Leviticus chapter 5. Here's the fifth one. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 5. Leviticus 5, 5. It shall be, when he shall be guilty in one of these things, they shall confess that uh, he hath sinned in that thing. It's good to make confession to God when you're wrong, make confession. All right? He shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin, which he hath sinned, a female from, a, from, from the flock, a lamb or kid of the goats, for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass, uh, which he hath committed, two turtle doves, or two young pigeons unto the Lord. One for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering. All right? So here we got this little dove mentioned here, a turtle dove. All right? So he says, ladies and gentlemen, I was guilty. I was guilty before God. I had sinned, I trespassed, I violated God's law. Guilty, sin, trespass. All right? That's what happened. And two things are necessary. First, he says, confession of that sin. But that won't save me because it's just a confession. It's an acknowledgement, but it's not a payment. A payment I must be made. And the blood sacrifice is the payment I, that God requires. A blood sacrifice. And back in the Old Testament days, if you were too poor and you could not afford a lamb, God would let you take and bring a dove 
as a sacrifice. Now, there are some amazing things about the dove. In fact, I could preach a whole message just on the dove, right? It has a mournful sound, a sad sound. And they tell me a dove doesn't have any gallbladder on the dove. And it's the gallbladder, right, that produces the gall, that causes bitterness of taste and bitterness in digestion and bitterness, right, that sours the stomach and bitterness, right, that sours your heart. What a picture of Lord Jesus Christ, the dove, surrounded by sin, Surrounded by rebellion, surrounded by cursing, surrounded by swearing and lying and deceit. And you say, well, why in the world doesn't he just take out his sword and just kill and slay it and destroy? Because he's not bitter against you. He doesn't hate you. He doesn't despise you. And uh, you look in your life, and I look in my life, I think of the ways that I've treated the Lord Jesus Christ and the way that I've, uh, you know, been unfaithful to my Savior. I think of my attitude toward His laws and commandments in the Scriptures. And I think of how I've turned, I to, uh, I've, to, I've turned, I to, you know, from His righteous decrees in the Word of God. And I think how I've violated, broken his heart at times. I can't hardly believe he's not my enemy. I can't hardly believe that he doesn't want to cast me in hell. I can't hardly believe that he loves me and gave himself for me. You know why? He's my dove. There's no bitterness in him. We carry those grudges. Amen. We harbor bad feelings. We hang on to resentments over offenses that we've received from somebody. We carry uh, and take on those, those I mean, we, 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 we carry those cutting, hurting words that somebody said, and we let them fester and make us sick in our stomachs and troubled in our hearts. And they give us indigestion, and they keep us awake at night. And we're so torn up and so sour. But Jesus Christ takes the abuse. He receives the wrongs because there's no bitterness in him at all. I thank God for my heavenly dove. Amen. The dove also chooses a mate for life and never departs, uh, never departs uh, from that mate. Jesus Christ, my dove. Oh, I've wronged him. I've wronged him. I'm not what I ought to be. Amen. But he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The dove also builds a nest, and it never builds another nest. It will repair the nest. I, to, but once that dove takes a mate and builds that nest, it stays there all the days of its life. What if the dove you know, could speak? I believe that dove would say to the female dove, Honey, we may have to take and patch up the nest from time to time, but I'm here until the Lord calls me home. And I'm sure the female dove would say I to the male dove, Honey, I don't care if your feathers are turning gray. I'm here with you until the Lord calls me home. That's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, my heavenly dove. Jesus Christ and His church. If you ever um, do any dove hunting, I, I did one time with my father-in-law. I'm, I'm not a hunter. I, every time I go hunting with him, it's always been a disaster. I told him the time we went coon hunting. We went on coon hunting. He has some dogs. He wanted to become coon hunting dogs. These dogs wouldn't know a coon from a fox, from a skunk, guy from a rat or a mouse. All right? And we're stopping through woods. To climb over trees, over bushes, through thickets and thorns. And finally, we've been there for an hour, an hour and a half, close to two hours. He says, all right, time to go home. I said, go home. We haven't seen, we haven't seen, we haven't seen the coons. He said, oh, we ain't going to see no coons. I said, we don't see no coons. No, the dogs, they chase them all away. And my father says, what are we doing out here? Why are we wasting an evening out here? Well, we want dove hunting. I went also one time on this guy's farm. He had a bar and all these doves. and shoot all these doves. 
and they, we go out there, and the doves are all over the barn, and stuff like this goes, and, you know, here's a shotgun, I get a shotgun here, we shoot these doves as they come out, and we're just shooting birds, and all this stuff goes, and I don't think, I don't think you can hit a bird, right? I'm just not a hunter, right? Have ever done any bird hunting, any, any dove hunting? I figure the time and the shots, the plucking, the cooking, why would anybody want to go dove hunting when they just go to Colonel Sanders? Right? But that dove, I, they tell me also, has no eyelids. It never blinks. It never winks. It never closes eyes. It has no eyelids. Well, Psalm 121, verse 3 and 4 says that one that is watching me and keeps me, he never slumbers nor sleeps. God's got his eye on me. And he never winks. He never blinks. He never shuts one eyelid. He's all, I'm always in his full view. Amen. When he went to the cross, the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him. He had his eyes fixed eyes, uh, on the joy that would be his when he saved my soul. He went to that cross and he never took his eyes off me the whole time he's hanging. I thank God for my dove the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then notice here number 6 in Leviticus chapter 5 verse 7. He also mentions the pigeon. All right. Two turtle doves and the verse, or two young pigeons unto the Lord, one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering. Now the pigeon right, is, is, is noted for sacrificial purposes. Did you ever read about uh, those homing pigeons? Homing pigeons. It's an amazing bird, the homing pigeon. Uh, you take that pigeon perhaps hundreds of miles away and you turn that little bird loose. You know what it does? It flies right back to where it came from. It's a homing pigeon. During the First World War, what they called the Great War, pigeons were used right, to carry messages right, across battlefields. Right? Giving the message, he flies on back over top of all the soldiers, all the gunfire, and he flies it all back and delivers the message right back to headquarters. Headquarters is up there in New Jerusalem. And I'm down here on earth. I'm behind enemy lines. I have an enemy all around me. Sometimes I'm completely surrounded. But my great pigeon, the Lord Jesus Christ, he can get the message to me no matter how thick the battle is. He just flies right into the midst of the camp and says, I've got a message for you right here from home. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. He says, be strong, I have a good courage. He says, I stand, and having done all, to stand. The message I from heaven. How do I get those messages direct from headquarters? Surrounded by an enemy? I've got a great pigeon up there who brings me the word of God. Pigeons fly out, carries a message in the enemy territory, then flies right back to headquarters. Amen. Well, what a picture of my sin. I thank God. Lord Jesus Christ, my great pigeon. That pigeon was a clean bird. And because it was a clean bird, it was used in the sin offering. Then number seven, for time's sake, Psalm 84. Psalm 84. Seven birds. Psalm 84. Verse 1. How lamentable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. The heart of my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the, the sparrow hides a, a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. The sparrow has a home, a dwelling place in the courts of the Almighty, a place in the altars right, of the Almighty. Look with me in the um, Matthew chapter 10. A couple places on the sparrow. Matthew chapter 10. Of course, the sparrow is the least of all birds. The least. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 29. Are not two sparrows stole for a farthing? 
and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. He says in verse 31, Fear ye not, therefore, for ye have more value than many sparrows. There's not one sparrow that falls to the earth that your heavenly Father doesn't know about. You know what? He cares about sparrows. All right? Well, then it gets chapter 14 now. Sparrows, the least of all the birds. All right, Leviticus chapter 14, of course, this is the chapter here on the leper. And, of course, leprosy is a picture of sin. It runs deeper than the skin. It runs through the whole body. It kills. It contaminates everybody it comes in contact with. And there is no way to get over that leprosy unless God heals you. Great picture of sin. But notice in verse number 2, Leviticus 14, verse 2. And the priest shall go forth out of the camp. The priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest con command to, be to take for him, that is to be cleansed, two birds alive, and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet in his hop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. That bird I should be killed, he says, where? In an earthen vessel. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me, the Bible says. That is, God took upon him the form of a man and came and dwelt in an earthen vessel. He went to the cross and he cried out, All, all he says, all the waves, I ate in billows, are gone over me. In Psalm 42, verse number 7. The Bible takes that bird, I, the Bible says take that bird, I take that sparrow, the least of all birds, kill it in an earthen vessel, running water pouring over it. Verse 6, as for the living bird, he shall take it in the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and, dip, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle blood upon him that is be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose in the open field. Two birds, two sparrows, if you will, the least of all birds. I know what I am. I am the very least. I'm the lowest thing in all God's creation. I'm a worm, amen, just a dust of the earth. But to think of the Son of God, Lord Jesus Christ, could come down so low as to like me, to be like, to like me like a sparrow. One sparrow is killed, one sparrow is slain, and his blood was to be shed, and the other sparrow would need not die. What a picture. One sparrow dies, the other sparrow lives. And all and all it had to do, all it had to do with was what? Was to be dipped in the blood and it can be set free. Dipped in the blood and set free. I've been set free. Amen. I'm like a sparrow. I'm, I've, I'm on the housetops. I've been set free. Because I've been washed in the blood of the other sparrow that was slain so I can go free. The Lord Jesus Christ came. He died in my place. He died in my place. So I need not die. He took my death. So I need not die. And all I need to do is be washed in the blood. And I'm set free. If you're here this morning and you've never been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you need, you need to be set free from your sin. You need to be set free from your condemnation. You need to be set free, I, and only one way to do so is by the blood of the Savior. I thank God I've got an eagle. Thank God I've got a hen, and I've got a pigeon. I've got a dove. I've got a pelican. I've got an owl, and i got a sparrow. Job says in Job 12, verse 7, But ask now the beast, and they shall teach you, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. 
You can learn a lot from birds. In Romans chapter 1, verse 20, Paul says, For the indivisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. What God's made, his creation, lessons all around us that point us to the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he your Savior today? Have you been washed in the blood today? If not, why don't you come and be saved today? Let's stand this morning. Heads by nice clothes. God spoke to your hearts. Maybe you need a maybe you need to be bore up today by the eagle. Maybe you need to flee under the under the hen's wings. Maybe you need to be fed because you're out there in that wilderness by the pelican. Maybe you need to be saved like that little sparrow. God spoke to your heart to come today. To come today. Father, we ask the Lord to speak to the hearts of those who are here now. Thank you for the word of God today. Thank you for the message. Pray, Lord, you might take and help us today. To, what, what a wonderful Savior we've got. And I realize, Lord, he's all these things to us and more. Pray now, Lord, you speak to hearts of once lost. God, I pray they get saved now in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray as by now, let's close just for a moment. God spoke to your hearts. You're welcome to come to this altar of prayer. Seven birds. Seven birds. All picture the Lord Jesus Christ. Need to come, come. Come. Thank God we got a Savior who cares about us. He'll bear us up on those wings of eagles. He'll gather us under those wings of the chicken. He'll provide us sustenance for those dry places of life. Thank God He's got the blood set us free. Thank God He watches over us. All the time. He never blinks. He never closes his eyes, give the devil opportunity. His eyes are always upon us. Need to come to come this morning.